most people look at just Isaiah chapter 53 or 7 or Isaiah 9, but this one speaks of Jesus in a powerful way. Watch this, my friend. Hey, by the way, my new book, you can check it out on Amazon right now, and I think you'll be blessed by it, but it is a comprehensive book, Jesus in the Old Testament, seeing where he's at in every single part of the Old Testament, you will be blessed by it. So hey, the link is down in the description below. Let's move on. So Isaiah chapter 60. This is going to be so good, my friend. So it says in the the first part of it, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Yahweh's glory has risen upon on you. On you, my friend. He's speaking to you. This is God. Arise, shine. And by the way, these are the Dead Sea Scroll scriptures, which were written 150 years to 200 years before the birth of Christ. And they were found in 1946 in a cave. And in this one clay jar was the perfect scroll of Isaiah. It was complete. And not only that, if they stretched it out, it was 24 feet long. So this is preserved scripture speaking about Jesus before he was even born. Isn't this awesome? So let's get back into the presentation. Check this out, you guys. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Yahweh's glory has risen upon you you. And doesn't that speak of Jesus? He was risen from the dead, right? But it also speaks of his second coming. He'll come in the clouds and his light will shine upon Jerusalem. It'll be awesome. Again, my friend, see Jesus in the Old Testament, my new book. The release date is August 25th, available at Amazon. It's going to be around 300 pages and it's comprehensive and it and it just goes in detail uh, how to see Joseph in the Old Testament, how to see Moses as a type of Christ, Joseph as a type of Christ. The very first word in the Bible in Genesis, Breshit in, in the Hebrew, how, what it, how it shows the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And then there's so many places in Genesis and then it goes into the prophets and then the Psalms and, and you're just going to be blown away. I know you'll love it. All right, well, let's get back into that presentation. Here we go, you, my friends. So check this out, Isaiah 60. It says, For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. Now, I know that happened when Jesus was crucified. There was a darkness so thick, and it was for three hours while he was on that cross. And then it was light, and he announced Psalm 22, as you guys know. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The first phrase in Psalm 22, bringing everybody to that scripture, by the way. And it was also called the Psalm of the Dawn, and light was coming after three hours of darkness from noon to 3 p.m. while he was on that cross. But it also speaks, my friend, of the future, because... There's going to be a darkness in the future in the book of Revelation. That seven-year tribulation period is also going to have a darkness. So a lot of times with prophecy, there's a near fulfillment, and then there's a far fulfillment. This is how prophecy works, and that's what we see here. So, so behold, darkness will cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. So it continues on here, my friend. And it says, but Yahweh will arise on you and his glory shall be seen on you. Jesus is called what? The light of the world. And his, he will arise on you. His glory and his light will shine upon you if you belong to him. When he returns, you'll see him in the clouds. When you're caught up to be with him in the clouds, as the scriptures say. And the nations will come to your light and kings to your brightness for your rising. So here you see that it's about his millennial thousand year reign from Jerusalem, physically from Jerusalem, Jesus will be there and the kings will uh, will come just to see what, what this is, he's all about in this beautiful city, this light that's coming from this amazing, amazing new Jerusalem that we're going to see. So awesome. Lift up your eyes all around and see they all gather themselves together They come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters will be carried in arms. 
probably in the arms of angels, right? And then you shall see and be radiant and your heart will be enlarged. Your heart will be enlarged. That's beautiful scripture right there because it's like your heart is burning within you with God's love. It'll be enlarged with joy and the love of God. Doesn't that, when you're, when you're filled with joy, doesn't it feel like your heart has grown? It's enlarged and it's also burning. That's what I think. When the Holy Spirit fills my heart, it's like that. Uh, and it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes, and it's just an amazing thing when it does. All right. And the scripture continues, but we want to look at this first. This is the temple, right? The new temple. There'll be this light coming from the temple and the temple speaks of Jesus. It's the light is going to come from him in these scriptures. And it's just beautiful. So because the abundance of the sea, of the sea will be turned to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. So when you see that word sea, a lot of times that means the nations or the Gentile nations and the wealth will be coming just like it did with, with Solomon and with David. The wealth will be coming to Jerusalem to be given to the king, the king of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus. And that's what we see here. So it's just beautiful. All right. Imagine it. All the gold in the world Gold is, is really, it is precious because did you know on the, the element, the table of elements, gold is the only one that does not corrode. It's the only element in the universe, in our, in our world that does not ever corrode. It never, ever corrodes. And it's just perfectly preserved. And corrosion is a type of burning. Like everything in the universe is like biodegrading or burning or corroding, except for gold. It doesn't. And the streets, my friend, will be paved with these. Like these will be the paver stones and the foundation will be like the concrete of today. It'll be gold, pure gold. Isn't that awesome? So much. There's so much in the Bible that tells us what it will be like. And all the sons of those who afflicted you will come bowing to you. So the ones who persecuted Jesus and his followers will be coming bowing that will be bowing to him. And all those who despised you will bow themselves down at the soles of your feet. Wow. And they will call you Yahweh's city. The Lord is there, right? The last word in Ezekiel, Yahweh's city, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So beautiful. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So good. I can't wait for this day. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated so that no one passed through you. Remember, Jerusalem was a desolate place. Mark Twain even talked about it in the 1800s. And during the Holocaust, right, it was fully manifest where the Jewish people were treated horribly. They were starved and they were put in ghettos and in concentration camps. But that's not going to be what's going to be forever. God's showing us right here in Isaiah 60 that there's going to be something different that comes. And it says, I will make you an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. That's what God promises. And then you will know that I, Yahweh, right? That means the Lord am your savior, your redeemer. They're going to know, they're going to see him whom they pierced. And they're going to weep with him, just like Joseph's brothers weeped with him when they realized he was alive. It's going to be that same picture. And we see that in Zechariah chapter 12, right? They weep together. So it's a beautiful thing. So Jesus came the first time, my friend, as the lamb, humble and meek and, and harmless, right? But he came full of grace to give us life if you would choose to follow him, believe in him. But his second coming speaks of him coming as a lion, as the lion of the tribe of Judah, king of kings, lord of lords. And he's coming as a great warrior for his people. So it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. And he's called the mighty one of Jacob. The last part of this part that we're looking in Isaiah 60, the mighty one of Jacob. So good. Hey, my friend, if you have not yet subscribed, you want to click on this playlist uh, right here. And you also want to click on that button, that subscribe button, smash that button because then you won't miss anything. It's all free. It doesn't charge. You know, I don't charge a thing for any of that stuff. You don't have to become a member, any of those things. And it's all free. And there's content. Um, like I said, this playlist right here, how to find Jesus 
in the Old Testament or how to see them in the Old Testament. There's so many videos that you want to check out, my friends. So God bless you.